Ah, so we move closer, closer to Easter. Um, while next Sunday is Palm Sunday, the uh, official beginning of Holy Week, uh, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, the gospel lesson we want to attend to this morning is absolutely essential to understanding the events of Holy Week, at least as far as the gospel writer John tells us. If you want to think about a, a movie, and sometimes in the movie there's these beginning clips that give you some backstory, and, and if you miss that part, it's not that you don't get the rest of the movie, but you don't get the whole story. So that's why we are encountering this morning and paying close attention to chapter 11 of the Gospel of John. It's 57 verses, and so I'm not going to read all of them to you, but I'm going to invite you, as I have invited myself in this last week, to walk through it, to listen, to pay attention as we go. So some commentary to help us understand. So we know that uh, Jesus and his disciples had been traveling and they had been healing and teaching and all the good work of Jesus had been spread. And we're told in the verse just preceding chapter 11, it says, and many believed in Jesus. So his fame, his uh, love of him was growing. And then we encounter these words, the very first words of chapter 11 of the Gospel of John. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. We know Mary and Martha from another story in the Gospels. Um, we know that Mary, Martha, and now Lazarus were good friends of Jesus. What we find out here in these very, in these very early verses is that Lazarus, their brother, is sick, and the two sisters, having known uh, what Jesus could do, having uh, known him as a healer, it says the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, the one whom you love is sick. So they call on Jesus, knowing that he can do something, and Jesus gets word, but we find out in this, in this uh, chapter that Jesus doesn't go right away. Jesus doesn't go right away. In fact, we're told that after he gets the word about Lazarus being sick, he doesn't go for two days. He tells his disciples, you're going to have to wait and see. You're going to have to wait and see the glory of God unfolding. So Jesus uh, arrives, and we read in verse 17, when Jesus arrives, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Oh, See, Jesus' delay wasn't, didn't mean the death of Lazarus. It must be that Lazarus had already died even before Jesus knew that he was ill. Interesting. Um, we are now so used to, what, cell phones and internet that everyone would know everything right off. But apparently, uh, the word had come slowly. Jesus then gets to Bethany, and there are many people there. So many people have come to console Mary and Martha. And we could just sit with that because we've felt it, right? We've lost a loved one and, we're, and, and people gather around to grant us comfort and sometimes to just weep with us. And that, that apparently is what's happening here. The, the community has surrounded Mary and Martha with so much love. Jesus gets there. In the midst of all this, and we're, we're told in verse 20, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. And then Martha said these words to Jesus, which I bet all of us have felt at some point in our lives. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, and I think she had a strong voice, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Wow. But, but that's not the end of what she says. But even now, but even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Ah, right? That belief and unbelief, that holding together that anger and that trust in Jesus, all in that one line. And, and Jesus says to Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, well, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. 
And then Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Then he asks Martha, do you believe this? Do you believe this? And Martha said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When uh, Jesus asked her this, it is not a theoretical question. It's not a big general. In the end time, do you believe this? But do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life? And she gives that great testimony of faith. Yes, Lord, I believe. When... Martha had said this. She went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher's here and he's asking for you. Can you envision this? Mary is crying, I'm sure. She is a wreck. And Martha's now been out and she comes back and says, the teacher is is calling for you. And when Mary got up, she went quickly out to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. And the Jewish people who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up and quickly go out. And they they followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. They were going to keep weeping with her. And when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and she said to him those very same words of Martha, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I want us to feel this. Right? Because it's like us. Lord, if you had been here, my fill-in-the-blank would not have died. Show us your power. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, Jesus was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He had compassion. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. This is the one who weeps with us also. Jesus began to weep. And they said, see how, see how he loved him? But some said, could he not have opened the eyes of the, not, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Do you feel all this tension, this belief, this did believe, disbelief, this trust, this lack of trust, even in Jesus' day? And so this Jesus, this one who is still weeping, um, greatly disturbed, we're told, comes to the tomb It was a cave and the stone was lying against it. You kind of hear what's going to happen. Sounds a little bit like Easter morning. And then Jesus said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of the dead man, said, Lord, there's going to be a stench. Because he's been dead for four days. Jesus, don't you know his body's already going to be rotting? And Jesus said, did I not tell you? Did I not tell you? That if, if you believed, you would see the glory of God. And so they did. They did it. They took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I've said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, that they may believe you sent me. And then when he said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet still bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to the crowd gathered, unbind him, let him go. Wow. Unbind him, let him go. I am sure that Jesus could have unbound him and let him go, right? I mean, Jesus, the one who raised the man from the dead, could have done it himself, but he knew He knew that the community had to help free this man. He knew that it was the community's work to bring Lazarus back to full life, unbind him, free him to life again in the community. And so was there rejoicing? Oh my gosh, yes. 
but not for everyone. And, and I've most often left the story off there because I love that ending. But we can't get to Holy Week, at least as far as the Gospel John tells us, without these last words. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, now believed in Jesus. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees called the meeting of the council and said, what are we going to do? This man is performing many signs, and if we let him go on like this, then everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing at all. You do not understand that it's better for you to have one man die for the people than have the whole nation destroyed. He did not say this on his own, but being the high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was about to die for the nation. And not only for the nation, but to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on... They plan to put Jesus to death. So that raising of Lazarus, that incredible moment, came at a cost. So therefore, no, Jesus no longer walked about openly among the Jews, but went from there to a town called Ephraim in the region near the wilderness, and he remained there with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. And they were looking for Jesus and were asking one another as they stood in the temple, what do you think? <laughs> Surely he will not come to the festival, will he? We know that he does. Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that anyone who knew where Jesus was should let him know so that they could arrest him. Do you feel the power now in this story, this raising of Lazarus, this glory, but also what it cost Jesus and his courageous entry that we celebrate next to Sunday into Jerusalem. It is a story that is yet to unfold. And so we are thankful for the raising of Lazarus. We are thankful for the courage. And we are thankful that because of all of this, we have new life ourselves. So as we prepare to go to communion, the gift offered to us, let us celebrate that gift of new life that comes to us through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection as we